Ever wanted to use your machine learning model inside another application? That's where deployment comes in. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to deploy your scikit-learn or Python machine learning model so that you can use it in a whole wide range of use cases. So up until now in this series, we've covered how to build a machine learning model using Pandas, Python, and scikit-learn. But now we're getting into the nitty gritty and we're taking a look at how we can deploy our machine learning model to use it in other applications. So deployment is really important because it allows you to hook into other things. So say we wanted to build a React app or use Node JS to interact with our API. That's where deployment comes in. So specifically today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how we can deploy our machine learning model using Watson Machine Learning. So we'll cover how to set up Watson Machine Learning really, really easily, how we can deploy it with just a couple of lines of Python code, and last but not least, how we can perform scoring using that deployed REST API endpoint. So this is going to mean that later on when we get into the next part of the series where we start building our machine learning app, we're gonna be able to use this deployed endpoint in virtually any application. So when we build our machine learning app, we'll be building it using Node.js and React. And even though we've deployed our machine learning model in Python, we're gonna be able to work with it in virtually any other language. Ready to get to it? Let's do it. All right, so we finished our last session by building our machine learning model, but it doesn't end there. Oh, no, no, no. In this video, we're gonna be going through how to deploy our machine learning model so that we can start to use it to integrate with other applications. So today we're gonna to be using Watson Machine Learning to deploy our model as a REST API. This basically means that we're going to then be able to use it inside of our Node and React app and you can start to hook it into anything that uses APIs. So let's go on ahead and get started. Now, as I said, we're gonna be using Watson Machine Learning. So first up, we need to create a Watson Machine Learning service. To do that, all we need to do is go head on over to IBM Cloud. So you can access that from cloud.ibm.com, select catalog, go to services, and then choose AI and machine learning. So there's a whole bunch of AI services here. What we're really focused on is machine learning. So this is the service that's going to allow us to deploy our machine learning model as a REST API. Now there's a bunch of plans here, but just stick with light. There's more than enough capacity there if you're just playing around and getting started. So I think you get up to 5,000 predictions per month and you can deploy about five machine learning models. So we're just gonna choose light and then hit create. Perfect, that's all done. So now what we actually need to do in order to use our machine learning service is generate some credentials. So these credentials are going to allow us to access our Watson machine learning service from our local Jupyter notebook. So what we can do is just go to service credentials, create new credential, and we're just gonna call it Python ML. Then what we need to do is change the role from writer to manager and hit add. So this will create a new credential and you can see that's set up now. All we need to do is open that up and copy these details. Perfect, so that's really the machine learning service done from a IBM Cloud perspective. Now what we can do is start to work in our Jupyter Notebook again. So in this particular case, what we're going to need to do is just create a dictionary to store these credentials. So we're just gonna call it creds and we're gonna paste in our credentials there. Perfect, alrighty, cool. So what we'll do now is start to install some of our dependencies. There's really only one key dependency that you need, and that's the Watson Machine Learning API client. So we can install this from our notebook using the pip install command. So let's go and do that. All right, so it looks like I've already got it installed. It might take a little bit longer if you're installing it for the first time. But remember, all you need to do is put an exclamation mark and then run pip install and whatever the dependency that you need inside of a notebook to install from a notebook. So here we've just installed the Watson machine learning client dependency or library. Now what we're going to do is actually import that into our notebook. So we can import the Watson machine learning API client from this particular package using our regular import commands. So let's do that. Alrighty, cool, so we've now imported our dependencies. So we've imported Watson Machine Learning API client. In order to use that client and specifically to use our Watson Machine Learning service, we need to create a new instance or a connection to this client. So what we can actually do is create a new instance of our Watson Machine Learning API class and pass through our credentials 
to connect up to it. So let's go and do that. So we're gonna store our connection to the Watson Machine Learning API client inside of another variable called WML client. So this just stands for Watson Machine Learning Client. So we've created a, or we've started to create a new instance. Now what we're going to do is just pass our credentials to our Watson Machine Learning API client and run that. Perfect, so we've got our client. Now what we're going to do is set up some constants for our machine learning model. So specifically, we're going to create a variable for our model name, our deployment name, and we're also going to specify which of our models is our best model. We've already specified that up here, but we're gonna put it in all caps, just so we're consistent with our naming conventions. Perfect, so we've set up our model constants. So you can see that we've named our model transaction forecast, we've named our deployment transaction forecast deployment, we're getting verbose here, and we've also specified our best model variable to equal our best model, which is our random forest model. That was the one that performed best when we trained it last time. Now what we need to do is start to specify our model schema. So this is just the format that Watson Machine Learning needs your machine learning model in or some of the schema details in, in order to load it up into our Watson Machine Learning service. So let's go on ahead and do that. Perfect, so that's our model schema set up. So we've just specified the model meta name and specifically the name component of that. There's a bunch of other details you can pass through. For now, we're just doing sort of the bare minimum. Right, now that that's done, we can go and save our model. So there's two key parts to deploying a machine learning model using Watson Machine Learning. So we actually first save our model into Watson Machine Learning. So this is actually similar to taking our random forest model and just putting it up there. And then second, we actually take that model and we deploy it as a REST API. So that's the second phase. So we're about to do that first phase where we take our model and store it into Watson Machine Learning. Now the output of this is we'll get a unique identifier or UID. This is going to allow us to reference our deployed or our saved model. So in order to save our model into Watson Machine Learning, we're going to be using the store model method. This takes a couple of parameters, specifically the model that we want to pass up, our training and our target data, as well as our model pipeline. So let's go on ahead and push those details in. Perfect, so we've now gone and run that cell. So that's basically gone and taken our model and actually published it up into Watson Machine Learning. So now what we're going to do is extract that unique identifier for our specific machine learning model. So we can grab that from our published model details. All right, so we've grabbed our model UID so we can actually print that out. And you can see that that's our unique identifier that represents our machine learning model that we've just gone and saved up. So remember I said there was the two parts to actually deploying this. So we've now gone and done the first part. The second part is actually deploying this as a REST API. So let's go on ahead and deploy it. Now, in order to go and deploy it, what we do is we take our model UID and we create a new deployment. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, awesome. So you can see our model is now deploying. So we've passed through a couple of key keyword arguments. So we've passed through our artifact UID as our model UID. This is basically just asking, or oh, what's the number for your machine learning model? So we've just passed through that. What's the deployment name? So we specified our deployment name up here. So it was transaction forecast dash deployment and whether or not we wanna deploy synchronously or asynchronously. So you can see that we've also got a status and we've successfully finished the deployment. And we've also got our deployment UID here as well. So we've actually just gone and completed those first two steps. So we've now saved our model up and we've also deployed it. 
Now what we probably want to do is actually go and test it out and see how well our model is performing and just to make sure that it all works. So let's go on ahead and test this model out. Now let's create a new section so we can start to separate out our segments. So I'm just going to create some markdown and we're just going to call this uh, deployment review. Now, in order to test out our deployment, we're going to need a couple of key things. So specifically, we're going to need our machine learning token. We're also going to need our machine learning instance ID. And last but not least, we're going to need our scoring URL. We've actually got all of this available to us. We just need to pull it out. So let's take a look at how we can get that. Perfect, so we've now got our deployment stuff. So specifically, we've got our token. So this is going to allow us to authenticate when we go to make a prediction. We've also got our machine learning instance ID. So this is just coming from our credentials that we published up here. And last but not least, we're also grabbing our scoring URL. So this is part of our deployment. So when we go and deploy, it actually creates a scoring URL so we can then go and use that to integrate into other applications. So this is actually just coming from our deployment details. So if we take a look at our deployment, you can see that we've got our scoring URL here. We're just using the dictionary to extract that URL specifically. Okay, so now that that's done, what we can actually do is start to score. So let's go on ahead and do that. Now, again, we're gonna need a couple of dependencies to actually make a prediction. So specifically, we're gonna need a couple of libraries that allow us to make requests to an API, and then we're going to format our API request and build that prediction. So let's first go on ahead and import our dependencies. Alrighty, so we've imported our dependencies. So we've imported URL lib3, requests, and JSON. So URL lib3 just helps us format our requests in a nicer manner before we send it to our API. Requests actually allows us to make API requests and JSON basically allows us to format our results. So now what we're going to do is set up our API request headers and our payload, and then we can make that request. All right, so we've set up our header. So in this case, our header contains three key pieces of information. So the type of information that we're going to be sending. So we're going to be sending JSON to our API. It also contains our IAM token. So this allows us to authorize when we're making our API calls. And last but not least, it also contains our ML instance ID. So this references our Watson machine learning service that we set up right at the start of this video. Now, the next thing that we need to do is set up our payload. So our payload actually represents the data or the scoring data that we're actually going to send to our API. So in terms of setting up our payload, we need two key things. So we need the fields and the order that the fields are in. So these represent our columns from our testing data frame. And we also need our data itself. Now, in order to send this data through to our API, we need to convert it into a format that's JSON serializable. I always have trouble saying that. That's actually relatively easy to do. We just need to use NumPy and convert it to a list. So let's go on ahead and create our payload. Alrighty, cool. So that's done. Let's take a look at our payload quickly. So this should be actually quite big. So you can see that we've got two keys. So we've got our fields and our values. So our fields just represent all of our columns and our values represent the data that we're going to be sending. So that's all well and good. Now what we're going to do is go and make our request to our APIs. So in this case, we're going to be using the request library to make that call. So let's go on ahead and make that request. Okay, so before I run that, let's just quickly take a look at what we're doing. So we're making a new post request and we're passing through our scoring URL, which we set up here. To that, we're also passing through our payload as a JSON object and we're also attaching our headers. So ideally what should happen is when we run this, we get a response code of 200, which means it's been a successful scoring request. Then we can actually access our predictions from the text property of our response scoring object. So let's go on ahead and run our predictions. 
All right, now what we can go and do is take a look to see if we've scored successfully. So if we take a look at our response scoring object, you can see that we've got a response status of 200. So it sounds like everything's gone okay. To see our actual predictions, all we need to do is access the text component. All right, and you can see we've got some predictions back. So what we can do is relatively easily format that back into a format that, that's a little bit more comfortable so we can push it into our pandas data frame. So in this case, what we're actually going to do is take our scored results, attach it to our testing data frame and actually calculate the difference then we can save down that document. So we've now actually gone and saved our model successfully, deployed it successfully and scored successfully. So if you wanted to stop here, you can. So we've now successfully deployed it. We're ready for our application. I tend to like to take a look at the scoring results just to make sure they seem okay. And I like to save that down as well. So in order to do that, let's reformat these results and attach it to a data frame. So what we can do is extract our predictions. So now we've got our predictions as a dictionary, which we can now traverse. In order to grab our prediction values, we can use the numpy squeeze function. Let's make sure we've got numpy imported. So the squeeze function basically allows us to extract our individual values from this particular values array here. So you can see that we've got an array within an array. We just want to extract those values. So we can do that relatively easy using MP squeeze. Perfect. Now, if we take a look, you can see that we've just got an array with our prediction values. So because we've got an array with our prediction values, we can attach this to our data frame. So let's go on ahead and create a prediction data frame. Cool, so we've created a prediction data frame. So this is just our testing data. So this is going to allow us to compare our values. Now what we can do is create a new column to store our scoring results from our API. Perfect, so we've now grabbed our prediction values and we've stored it in a new column called scores. So now we're going to be able to see our actual values and our scoring values. So if we take a look at our pred df data frame and we scroll all the way over to the right, you can see that we've got our actual values as well as our scoring values. Now we can create a difference column to take a look at the difference between our actual values as well as our scoring values. Cool, so what we've gone and done is we've created a new column called diff and that's the difference between our amount column and our scores column. So we should be able to see that now. Awesome, so you can see the difference between our actual values and our scoring values. Now we're not gonna spend too long analyzing those. I just wanted to show you how to calculate those differences and see the results of your scoring endpoint. If you want, you can also save this to a CSV if you wanted to use it for something else. So we can use the, do that using the to CSV function. Perfect, so now your results are now saved to a CSV. It'll be in the same folder that your Jupyter Notebook is in. But that about wraps up this video. So just to recap, so we created a Watson machine learning service. We set up our service credentials. We then imported all of those credentials into our Jupyter Notebook, saved our model, deployed a REST API and then actually perform some scoring. So this puts us in a really good position to go and build our machine learning app. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release new videos. If you've got any questions at all, I mean anything, be sure to drop a mention in the comments below and I'll get right back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again for tuning in, peace.